Hey guys, so in this video, I want to show you the shell prompt that I've been using for a long time. It is called Starship and it's written in Rust. It's super customizable and it's really, really fast. So to get started first, what is a shell prompt? And the easiest way I can say is if you see this guy here, that's what a shell prompt is. It's the way you can add or put your commands in your terminal. Now, if you've also coming from OMIZ shell, you have probably have seen like their themes and you know there's a lot of different options here. For example, for the longest I've used Robbie Russell, which is the most basic first one by default and it works, but I wanted more options and more ways to customize my shell prompt. Now, back here, so how do I use it? Um, if you see my terminal and the best way to show you quickly is this guy here. I like to see the directory I'm in I like to see the branch, and I like to see the changes, if there's any changes in my um, my branch. And I like to see the language I'm using in this specific directory, if there's a coding language in it in the first place. If it's, if there's like no, um, it's not a project, it doesn't matter, I won't show you anything. And the version of the language I'm using, for example, in this specific directory, I have Go, a Go project. So if you list them, you see there's actually some Go specific things. I know that the version that I'm using is 1.23.0 and I know the branch and the changes. In this case, there's nothing. So that's how I use it and it's very minimal. And you can see the theme here, like my prompt and my tmux config are quite similar in a way. There's no background color, it's just very minimal and it disappears as I'm coding. And so if we go to the website starship.rs and we start looking into it, you see the easiest way to install it is by just simply running this command. If you're on Mac, like I am, I can just run brew install starship and it supports most major shells out there. So bash, fish, Z shell, PowerShell, etc. I am on um, Z shell. So all I have to do is just add this line to my uh, ZSHRC and I should be good to go after I install it, obviously. So to get started, let's go here and look into some of their configuration. So after you install it, there's one thing you have to do, which is if you go here, you can create the configuration file under config. So here I am under config and I have a um, starship file here dot taml that I use to configure my starship. You can essentially copy paste this one or just kind of do it manually. One thing as well, if you want to put the starship dot taml in a different directory, all you have to do is just add this line to your zshrc file or whatever bash rc for example and make sure to put the path you want to put it in here. So essentially you can put it anywhere. So that's like the first thing you have to do to install it. Um, install it and then create the starship.toml, whatever you want, and then add that line to the ZSHRC to kind of load it. So to, to configure it, let me show you mine first. So here's my kind of simple configuration that I demoed moments ago, which is this here. The way this works for me is, um, first I have this like scan timeout, which every 10 milliseconds it just scans to see if something changed in the directory, like the git branch or whatever. I have this guy here, which is essentially this here. And I have something specific for like different languages and directories. So for example, whenever I'm in any directory, I wanna make sure I have like uh, three parent directories kind of shown if it's available. For git branches, I have this here, which is like the symbol for it. Git commit, I have seven characters for any hash um, I have for the commit itself and a simple kind of symbol for that. Git status, same thing. If I wanna like push, uh, if it's ahead or behind the remote one. And up there, so I have Node.js, for example, I have this word via, via Node.js with the version you see here we have like this dollar sign. That's kind of a variable that you can use to figure out the version of the language you're using. You've seen this in my Go here. So this here is actually the version here. The same kind of logic for different languages, Node, Rust, Go, PHP, Lua, Zig, etc. Dury and V as well, which is pretty cool. It shows you if you loaded your environment variables or not, and if you're in sudo. So that's a very simple config for me. That's all I'm doing with it. And that allows me to have this style that you see here. There are obviously a lot more things you can do with it. You can look into their documentation, like if you're working with, say, um, 
like environment variable, let's say, which is not a language, but you can essentially like customize it per whatever kind of tool or language you have in your in your shell, right? So in Go, for example, you can have things like formatting, the version format, like how, how you want it to look like, one point something, point something, and so many other things. So I'm just using the basics and it works. I want it to be as minimal as possible. You can see here, there's so many different languages, almost any language you might want. There's things specific for Docker and and other things. So you can even create a custom command, and which I'm not gonna go through this in this video because I have not done one like this before. And I think for most people, they would be interested in this preset. So if you just wanna like install it and, and make it look pretty as fast as possible, just install it, go to presets, and then look at the different options they provide. For example, you need to install NerdFont, obviously, so to have some symbols and things in your terminal. So assuming you picked the kind of the style you want, let's go to Groovebox Rainbow, because mine kind of is a Groovebox theme. Click on this one. You see that there's a command line here, a tool that you can use, so Starship. This is another thing, once you install it, you can go to Starship here type Starship, and you see all the different commands it provides. For example, in this case, we wanna add this theme. If I copy it and run it, here you see that we have a new command uh, prompt style. This looks cool. It's a bit more colorful than what I would like, but it's nice. There's things for Tokyo Night and other themes. Another way you can do this is by simply copy this guy here and just put it in your configuration and maybe modify some of those um, symbols if you care. So that's how you can kind of install a specific theme. Yeah, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. That's like how this works. It's pretty fast. So I'm on Z shell. So if you switch to bash or fish or whatever, you can pretty much like move the same look and feel to that other kind of shell that you're running. So yeah, that's pretty much all I want to show you in this quick video, just how to use Starship. And if you don't know about it, now you know, and how you can add a pretty nice theme to your shell prompt if you're interested. Hope you like it and I'll see you in the next one.